So I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a theatre director mainly, but I work within the realm of music. I also um, a musical director on shows as well. Uh, so I make hip hop theatre shows, so which deal with the, the music elements, the beats, um, but also the, the rap and the lyrics. I make work mainly with the voice, so get, get people to use their voice, so composing, uh, like looping uh, different vocal patterns and, and kind of putting that all together and orchestrating using the voice. The link to the music industry is, well, I guess the music industry is quite a broad term, but I guess you know what we do is is, is shows that encompass music that go that, that that are performed professionally around the UK internationally, um, and our, our music's played on, played on the radio here and abroad, um, and also we made a film of one of our shows so that, that 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 music gets broadcasted so all that fits within PRS. So there are kind of many ways that these things fit within. The industry as as a, for live performance and also recorded live performance and and, and songs, um, but yeah, that's kind of like a, a quick overview of, of of the different things that I do. Yeah, great. So the so the music from the shows that you make that kind of goes out and is broadcast and shared via like the usual platforms, Spotify, that kind of thing, but also played on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I mean, I guess our, ma our main thing is to perform it live, so is to get it out there. The yeah. the, the 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 recorded stuff and the, is just kind of part of the whole parcel, isn't it? But I think that that's the same with all musicians. So they earn a lot of their money from the live festivals and the gigs and that, uh, and the the sometimes the recordings and the videos are just promo to get you to go along to their gigs. And uh, I guess in some ways it's the same sort of deal, even though there is revenue from recordings is that, that, that's just a part of the whole kind of bigger picture yeah but your kind of part and passion lies in the live theater the live performance that's what it's about for you mainly yeah yeah totally totally and i think for a lot of musicians it is it's about the live part and even, a lot of people don't have that that chance for a, a while especially if you're working solo but once they do start doing live they realize 
Yo, this is where it's at. Yeah, brilliant. And how did you end up doing what you do? Oh, uh, yeah, from lots of different kind of, kind of, kind of uh, accidents and, and luck. Um, but I guess um, I went to college and uh, South Thames College, which is in South London, and one of our teachers, the, the college actually paid for us to do an experience with a local theatre, and mm -hmm. we went, we went, we went to the theatre, and uh, it was like mad. There was like. Uh, we watched this show that's completely in the dark and it was just all sounds for one which was like kind of this is crazy what they're doing with music because we were learning kind of normal kind of normal music i guess what you call normal so like, this is mad experimental and crazy people were crying after the show i was thinking wow like this is nuts and people are like this is wrong this isn't what you should this is this is wrong this should be banned but it was just like like sounds in the dark yeah. and there was like theater people running around and like dancing on pianos and going a bit crazy in the foyer and I thought wow this world this world is pretty nuts like this is pretty exciting but I actually got I got expelled from college well, not expelled suspended for something I didn't do so all of my class <laughs> went on and did this big performance at the theatre uh, anyway when I was allowed back to college I didn't uh through no fault of my own <laughs> I, um, everyone was like yo we did this sick show and it was in a massive um like theatre everyone watched it and it was kind of like you know it was quite depressing hearing that everyone did this show uh and then someone said to me oh you know they do classes and stuff there and i thought oh, i want to have that experience as well i want to have that experience as well so mm -hmm. i um and my, my background was 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 in music so i was making beats and and rapping and beatboxing and you know i taught myself guitar I really like i really into music but i wanted to go and go and do this theater thing that everyone else had done anyway I went there, I wasn't on the waiting list. Like they tried to kick me out when I went there. I didn't pay either. So like, we, don't, we don't know you, um, you're, you're not on the waiting list. Who are you? Cause I just walked in the Who session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just took part and they were like, you know, you can't, you have to put yourself on the waiting list. You're gonna get your mom or someone to fill out these forms and pay this money. But anyway, I went back anyway, cause I thought, oh, that was sick. Like, so I went back and then also started bringing my mates. And for a while they were like, hey, like comrade, we keep telling you, you can't keep bringing people you haven't paid. But one of the assistants <laughs> was like, actually, um, I think these, these boys are, cause are, are really eager to do this. Because every session they'd say, put your hand up if you've got stuff to show. And no one would put their hand, no one would ever share anything. And what was great, what great about the sessions is it was quite mixed. And especially with us, it was really mixed. But a lot of the people were like people that worked in banks, people that had gone to uni and wanted to do some like drama in the evenings or create in the evenings. But they wouldn't. They wouldn't want to share nothing. They they were going for. They were quite nervous. We were, we were eager to go. Like look look what, look at me. Look what we're doing. And then yeah. one of the assistants was like, I think I think we should just let them keep coming back. So I kept I kept going back there. Um, and then I started to we, we started to add rapping with theatre and and like merging it all together add, like with music. And we were doing music gigs as well, separately. But we started mixing them with theatrical forms. And then I started my own theatre company there. Um, which eventually kind of grew to like 10 people but I was kind of like directing it um, just because we needed a leader someone, someone to bring it together just skip some stuff there um, and, yes. and then from there um, BAC were like hey would you would you would you be up for like leading something with us, with us start like with us and in like 2008 I started the the BAC Beatbox Academy um and that's kind of kind of grown to kind of what it is now. We, we put on professional shows, and and I take and I go to other other theaters and venues and take that same sort of practice to other places and put those performances together. But one of the main elements of it is working with people not not who who may be trained, who may may have a music background, but also may not, it's because the idea is that, that most we all like music. We everyone likes music, uh, and it's about putting that together and kind of like taking where people the experience where they're from. And merging that all together. Yeah, and I guess your experience that you had that you were saying about going to that theatre company of just being persistent and turning up and being eager. I imagine you took a lot of that and was like, right, I want to make people feel included and you know inclusive in within this group. Can just for people that might not know, BAC is a venue in London. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. It's a theatre venue in London. It stands for Battersea Arts Centre. And yeah. um, it's like prides itself on being really experimental, like really experimental, and then in the future of theatre. But I, but I tell you, at first, 
we would be told off when we would add rapping and beatboxing and stuff to work we were doing they'd be like can you stop that can you stop messing around and it was like we're not messing around this is this is our serious work um yeah. and, and that's kind of one of the things that pushed us to be like hey we we just need to do this here but for ourselves like because they're not really getting it in their group um but yeah it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a a great breeding ground of loads of different artists started at BAC from really experimental artists to people like Harry Hill have started their careers here. Yeah, brilliant. And it's just, M has just asked a question in the chat, just asking what you what you did in college. What um, course did you take in college? Oh, um, I took BTEC Performing Arts. Okay, so it was a performing arts course. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. What, what would you say you enjoy most about what you do now? Um, I quite enjoy like the journey that you're able to take people on um, because I'm quite confident in in what I do. So, like when you when you meet people, they obviously want to. You usually they come to a workshop or you're working with a group of people that are there for a reason or directing them because they want to. They they want to. They're for something. But I guess sometimes they don't really they don't really believe that like this what we're doing today is going to turn out to be this massive theatre show or that they're going to be a part of it, either rapping or singing or, or writing. And I, I just, I get kind of a buzz of, of the, seeing the journey from uh, like the start to the end, like pe individual people's journey, uh, get, seeing them to do that. So some of the people that I work with who are, you know, quite prolific and working on different shows, have songs on the radio, thousands and no, hundreds of thousands of Spotify streams that tour in the world. I still remember our first meeting them and then being like, I don't want to sing, I don't, I don't sing, I don't sing. And it was like, yeah, you can. I heard you make. I heard you yeah. make, made a sound. I know you can yeah. sing. Um, yeah. So it's that, 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 those sort of that, that, those sort of things still still really excite me. Yeah. So that it's taking them on that journey and building their confidence and being with them throughout that whole whole process and seeing them grow as an artist and a person, I guess as well. If you're working with young people a lot. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And like I say, I, I actually didn't have don't have any musical training myself. So like, I'm I'm still kind of like I, I kind of enjoy just turning you know just crazy ideas into something, and and having the confidence in like hey like we can do this we we, we like music we're gonna do it, and uh, it's kind of sharing that kind of experience. Yeah, brilliant. And can you just give us an overview of some of the projects you've worked on? And I know just to let everyone know, Comrade has put um, a link into the chat, um, which I'll copy and just bring it. Um, further down um, for one of, just a password and a link to watch so we could watch a bit of one of his shows um, so while comrades talking like feel free to kind of turn off like have your sounds off and then just click on this Vimeo link um, and you can watch a bit of um, a bit of what he's done before but um, yeah just don't share this because it's a it's a <laughs> It's not to be shared. It's we're, we're special. We're getting special treatment that you shared this link. So, so yeah, Conrad, can you just tell us a bit about what you do, and if if people want to watch that while you're telling us, that would be great. Yeah, so I guess some re recent projects that are kind of stand out are, are Frankenstein, um, which is a kind of revisioning of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Um, that was uh, a show that I made with the Beatbox Academy. Uh, which runs every Thursday. It was kind of open for everyone just to take part. Uh, and the show, we got like five star reviews in the stage and the Guardian and the Observer. And we won like an off, off West End Theatre Award. And then we we were, pick, we were picked up for an international tour. So we went, we went to Adelaide and we're going to the Sydney Opera House and going to Brazil. Um, but as I say, people in that show, I mean, I remember when they couldn't, when they were very, actually quite nervous. And now, like, it makes me laugh reading, like, national reviews or, like, you know, being in the barber, especially in Australia, and they were, play they were playing the songs on ABC and being like, wow, that's Tyler. Or, you know, people that, people that you know that you've seen grow up over time. Yeah. So Frankenstein is... And we, and, then, and we also turned that into a BBC film. Um, so we, uh, we, we... They were interested in us turning into a film. We, we, we rewrote the storyboard and using music from that into a film. So that was quite quite a large project but also I worked on Crompton Nights which is um, a musical adaptation of a book by Alex Wheatle um, right. and he actually his life was made into a film recently I think it was called Small Axe or Little Axe on the BBC um, okay. he's a really really cool guy and we got to we actually got to meet him and work with him but we made a musical version of 
his book Come to Nights. And that got, you know, that was really, really good. Unfortunately, the tour was stopped because of Corona, but it was, it was, um, we, we made it into the list of top 10 shows of last year in The Guardian, which is pretty cool for what it's worth, but it was, it was a pretty cool thing to, to get that nod because that yeah. cast worked really, really hard on that show. So, because, um, like, we co created and, and like, you know, I helped to uh, orchestrate and put the songs together for all their voices. And again, they were a cast that were like quite late on, like, are we actually going to be singing the the backing the whole time like are we going to use backing tracks and it's like no no when you're not talking you're all making all the other sounds the whole time for two and a half hours it's like yeah. yes that that's what you're going to do it's impossible and it's like you know i've done this over and over again like it's totally possible we just need to train ourselves to be able to do it and dance and and use the revolving stage um so that was that was um a really really cool show to be part of Yes, and then, I saw that show at the Theatre Royal in Brighton. It was absolutely brilliant. And is it is there plans for it? I mean, I know no one can tell, but are there plans for it to come back and it will the tour kind of restart? Do you think? I know the cast are dying to do it. I think it depends yeah. on because it's very very expensive to tour a show like that to right. get back into it. So I don't know. I hope so. I mean, I think it'd be a great even online film or something that we could do with it. Yeah, um, amazing. That'd be yeah. that'd be that'd be brilliant. And I had um I did a I got a show called High Rise of State of Mind that was supposed to be performing at Manchester Home, but because of lockdown it was cancelled. But we but we did a live stream with no audience um of that show. Uh can't remember what it was now. Lock lockdown's made all my dates skewed. <laughs> yeah, sometime in the past year. <laughs> but that was pretty cool. We we developed that show with the C P T B A C and the Barbican and uh we we and again we we got great reviews in the stage and blah 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 and I kind of feel like it kind of turned lockdown into a positive because you know we were able to still do it and like and put the show on, um, yeah. and then we'll work on a new show called based on Pi the Pied Piper uh, of Hamlin. Okay. Yeah. So we're, we're re kind of turning that. That's going to be a beat a hip hop show for kids. Amazing, brilliant. And what do you um? So you so you kind of talked about the like the young people you work with, but how do you link up with other people in your industry? So have you got any kind of tips on how to approach people or how to network and collaborate with people within the industry, music industry or within the theatre, like live performance industry? Yeah, I think it, um, it's about going out. So I think that a lot of people think that going online and uh, is going to be the number one way, but that's not that's not the best way. You have to have quite a lot of con of real world success and contacts for online to start working uh, because right. online is this is this a load of nothing because anyone can pay for pr online but when you have real world like relationships it's about those actual relationships you see in people it's worth a lot more so i would say any group any music groups you can go to any art groups performance groups you should go and meet the people there the people running them are often seasoned performers or people that have some sort of contacts yeah. Um, you know, I know that I know a lot of DJs and producers who would go to loads of clubs, loads of things all the time, and they would be knackered. But the reason why they go would be so they could chat to the other DJs who are often producers as well to be like, well, like what are you doing?" Or, or or actually play them tunes, play them stuff, and be like, "Can you play this?" Um, I think that go, going out, like you know, the people used to hang out, hang around record shops to try and get like their their stuff. Um, sold in there and i feel like th th that's still quite valid it's about to go, go into you know you're not you're not necessarily going to go to hmv or whatever but you need i feel like you need to go to places and meet people and i think that a lot of people think go to a club or go to a group it's not going to work but it's about the one those other young people or all the people attending are going to be your peers and about the mm -hmm. people the people running have got contact so like i was running a, a, a group um in peckham and at the same time, I was contacted by, by McDonald's to put something together, an advert for McDonald's. Uh, so I, yeah. so um, three, uh, the, 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 all the people that I wanted from the Beatles Academy didn't want to do it because they were against were doing something for McDonald's. It felt fine, but the other group that, that I'd just been working with was like, "Hey, like, who wants to do something yeah. for McDonald's?" And it was like, "Wow, like that's amazing." Um, oh, and, sure, and so they, they were they were in an advert, but they wouldn't have. It's about kind of making those, not only making those connections, but a positive connection as well, because you remember if people have, have gone attitude or rude. I think if you're really good at something and you're sick, n no one cares if you're rude. 
And I think that sometimes people think like, I'm so good, like I can do what I want. It's like, no, 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 no one cares. No, you're not, no one cares if you're rude. Doesn't matter what artist, rapper, hip hop, trap artist, rare, rare. If in their videos they're arrogant, you see them behind closed doors in those meetings and they are polite and they're saying, yes, sir, no, sir, free bags, full, sir. You know, before, before, I worked uh, in like like you know, main main I, I worked mainly in the theatre industry now. But I used to work like I used to I, I was signed to a major label, Polydor Records. I had other publishing deals and worked in the record industry. And again, the way that people act is very different to how they act on their music videos and elsewhere. Because you have to be polite. No one's going to put up with a bad attitude. And they'll put out they they like people like to put out. The image that yeah he's always he's always rude and yeah yeah he's got a bit of swag but no one no like you you wouldn't part with that i wouldn't part with that no no one's gonna put up with that because there's always someone else who's gonna turn up on time who's also gonna be amazing at what they do yeah yeah that's excellent advice and i think like you say be be seen get involved join group don't expect things just to come to you and also, it's you're right. It's really important to be polite, be kind, be you know, be sort of open as well to ideas. I guess um, is what you're saying. Was there anyone or anything that influenced you in your childhood or as a young person that's kind of impacted on the choices that you've made in terms of your career? I think like musically, I've got loads of different people yeah, influences, but the, the the important influences, I guess, are like um like my social worker um so like the local council social services because actually i was always you know interested in music and stuff but i guess i took a lot from those people that seemed to be like helping me and giving me this and like for no for no reason giving that extra time and i, I like I, I that that's kind of like you know how i kind of see my role is like okay i am a musician and an artist and i've studied uh, and i went as a mature student to union and, and got a degree in my master and stuff but it's kind of that thing of like, you know, I felt like my life was saved. Like I was like, you know, getting arrested and, and getting you know, bad behavior and I had a bit of attitude, but it was other adults that kind of like stepped in and let me know, like told me about myself and also gave me, tried to help me and give me opportunities to be like, like you're going to ruin your life. Like, so I kind of feel like it's those, those things uh, influence me more like strong role models and teachers and stuff. Um, of course I have different music, uh, inspirations rare rare but everyone has those they're neither here nor there the catalyst that, that actually makes you have a career is going to be something else because the bus driver down the road has a million musical influences but they might not have met the person that's going to like make them into an artist or help or help them kind of have a career mm, yeah brilliant um just going back there's just um a little comment in the chat which is which i think is what you were saying is that um you know about being rude and it's it is a character you know like with musicians and artists on you know they they build a character and they're not necessarily rude in real life that's not what we're saying we're saying that they yeah that's absolutely it they might have this persona and character of, of coming across like that but then in person behind closed doors they're uh yeah they're not they're not that rude they're all right yeah. um can you just tell us a little bit about sort of your pathway into this job into what into what you do now you've spoken a bit about college but was there did you kind of do any sort of internships work experience or was it that you joined these groups and that was sort of you know the catalyst and the, the building blocks for what you do now well i guess what whilst uh, doing the youth theater at bsc um I, they put me on different as so i did different like schemes and stuff so like I was where I would get to um, shadow different members of staff. Um, okay. And I, I I guess like it was about being, I was, cause I was such an eager beaver, always hanging around the building that I was chosen to do those things. So I was quite lucky, but I had got to, but like, so I did some schemes, blah, blah, blah. But then whilst, as I said, I, was, I went to uni as a mature student. So then I went like, I, I didn't even know what uni was. When I was, at, when I was at college, I'd never heard of it. I never met anyone that went to uni. Um, and I mean, I, I knew that there was some distant cousin or someone that had gone to uni, and that was more of a, a negative thing in my family. Like, oh, well, he went to uni, and it was like, what's that? Do you know what I mean, <laughs> so like being at BAC kind of made, exposed me to people. It seemed like the people that had jobs or like were reading books or seemed like you know, they, I know that now uni isn't the be all and end all, 
But if you're from a particular background, I grew up on a council estate, where I was in jail, blah, blah. Actually, uni is going to help you quite a lot because you don't have any of that knowledge, any kind of a world of view. My parents didn't, didn't read any books. I no, ever never had any books in my house. But someone like me, I needed, I needed to go to university. Um, I think it's easy to, to disregard it if you grew up in a very cultured lifestyle. Maybe you, maybe you had holidays, holidays abroad, your parents read, blah, blah. Maybe, possibly, you don't need to go. But I think for some people, it's like a, you completely see a completely different scope of, of the way you look at your own life. Um, like I didn't, I, I didn't know that I lived in social housing. I didn't know that certain things, that, that was just normal life to me. I didn't realise that there was, wow, like, I know it sounds ignorant, but I know there's other people that currently don't really see, see the world outside of the world that they live and see the pathways into other different worlds and careers. So like it was being parts of groups that let, let me know about different other groups and gave me those other bits of knowledge. Because I always, now looking back, and kind of at the time, I always felt like I was a few years behind, a few steps behind, because you're always kind of catching up because, you know, I didn't have, you know, my mum wasn't necessarily going to help with a UCAS form or mention <laughs> mention any of these things. Like, if anything, they were confusing to my parents. It's like, you're getting on our nerves. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, so it was it was doing that it was doing that and then going and having the support of Battersea Arts Centre still because I was still able to put on work and and that's through relationships over time amazing and it it just that really highlights the importance of these venues and organizations and youth organizations that are you know there can be the other support for you you know if you haven't got that support at home or like you say you haven't got those influences and what did you study at uni when you went as a mature student? A dr uh, drama, the drama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I, I was, um, I was actually signed to to, and to a, to a record label at the time, a major label, and my manager said to me that um, it wasn't good for my image. It wasn't it's not going to be good for your image to do drama at uni, and we're trying to put you yeah. out as a sex symbol. Blah blah blah. Um, like you shouldn't like you shouldn't do this and it was like right. I, knew, I, knew, I knew what he was saying but it was like is this something that I, I needed to do for myself something that I wanted to do um so yeah. ba basically I had to kind of make that choice um and I don't I don't I don't regret it I, I mean you, you miss some of the money and stuff but um at that time but it was one of those life choices you just have to make because I wanted to I wanted to learn some stuff so was that when you stopped, was that when you were not, no longer part of the record label, when you went to uni, you had to make that choice? Yeah, pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Um, but, and I, and I realised the music music industry is, is a kind of a strange term, because if you're a musician, you can do music everywhere, you can, in many, many different ways, you can make music for television, you can make music for the local pub, you can put it in films, you don't have to be part of that one kind of factory. And actually, it was very limited, the things that they wanted me to say and do. Um, it works for some people, it's great. But it doesn't work for people that want to go off to union and thinks about merging it with theatre and stuff. It's, it's not, that's not what they want to hear. Yeah. No. Okay, but yeah, but you had, your, you had an insight and your time and experience in that world. And also, that was probably a good thing that you realised, this is not for me, I need to do other things and open up my horizon, so... Can you, um, if you're comfortable with this, can you just tell us a little bit about who pays you? Are you freelance? Are you a limited company? Can you just tell us a bit about your experience of kind of having to deal with that side of things as well? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'm freelance, so I get paid by different organisations that I work for. Um, but I also get funding, so whether it be Arts Council funding or from different pots of money. I'll get funding when we go on tour and stuff. It will be like um, from the money they give to the whole tour is kind of divvied up, um, right. but mainly it's from from funding, which I don't. Which I, a lot of musicians do live from funding. Um, I don't, but PRS also give out loads of funding to to artists uh, that a lot of people don't access. I think a lot of artists do not access the funding that there's available for them. And when I talk to people, it's kind of they see they look down on it. They see that that's not the proper way to do it. But it's like, well, how are you going to pay for your PR? How do you think that person on Instagram that's got all those ads, all that, they're not getting paid for those ads. 
They're not getting paid to go on that podcast. They're not getting paid for all of that. All that looks great, but they're earning, they're, they're, they're possibly earning their money. And if they are earning money, it's from funding. Because what's a re record label? It's a bank that gives you money. So why not go get some government money? Why not go go to another company and get their money? A lot of that money is, is actually taken up by a lot of people that are in the know. A lot of artists in the know get all the funding. We have other artists who right now could be receiving money. Don't. They, they, they feel like there's this dream of like, I'm going to get a record contract and someone's going to give me money. That's never going to happen if you don't get the money to get yourself to PR, to get yourself to the right keyboard or whatever it is that you need to get to that point. Um, but... Yeah, it's 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 all it's different different levels of funding, which is a legitimate way to get paid. But I think a lot of artists, for some reason, kind of look down on it. But it's like, but that just means money. <laughs> I mean, that just means you're getting paid. Yeah. And you said there about a lot of people that are in the know tend to get the funding. Have you got any advice on how you could potentially find out about lots of funding? Is there any? any sort of fights or how do you you know how did you kind of build up that knowledge was it through people telling you it was through people telling me unfortunately which is good i mean it, it, people which is good but it, it, I, I don't know if there's a, a central place to go i know if you go to the arts council website there are often links and stuff but yeah, i think that PRS, as well. prs give give good money like you know, prs are the people that are actually are supposed to be handling people's royalties at the same time they're actually funding certain artists um, so, and it's like people wonder, like, I know some artists who are signed, they wonder why is this artist getting all the reviews and getting here, but the same artists are getting funded by this, but it's, it's, it's a cycle, like it's not, uh, it, you're, not get, you're not getting here because you're successful, you're successful because you're getting here, these are the same people that are doing it. Um, and it's about becoming part, understanding that system and becoming part of it if you want to. Um, I think places like, I guess like like look out, but like places that can could be offering more knowledge and, and information. I'm, I'm sure you do. But I always try and give artists, but some a lot a lot honestly look down on it. You know, they they feel like I'll wait till like the time's ready, or I'll wait till I get some sort of deal. It's like this is a deal. This is someone putting money into your account, yeah. and you get to do what you. Yeah, yeah. like Absolutely. you could you could. This is the deal. The deal is you're earning your own money, and you don't have to pay it back. A record deal is a bank loan and you have to give it back. It's a lot worse for you. I know right. more I know people that have made much more money who who from the arts council. I know people that make no money zero, but maybe have some little record deal and their videos might look good, their PR might look good, but they're on universal credit. But people be like, they're smashing it, fam, they're smashing it. It's like, but they've got no money. They've got no money whatsoever. And it's really it's it's confusing. It's not just about money, but it's about having a career and be able to do, sustain yourself doing this and, and becoming. And the more money you earn, or the more you can sustain yourself, you become a better musician. The more you're on the breadline, you don't really have time to do that. It becomes just about a few more Instagram abs, and you made the new logo this month, um, and then the music kind of gets pushed to the side. I, yeah. But yeah, I think the, the, the whole funding world is really important. You know. I think there was a Netflix fund for theater artists, but there's also one, there was another one for musicians as well from a different company. Um, yeah. And there's a really good, there's an organisation called Music Venues Trust that's come out of this pandemic, which is which is brilliant. And, you know, they're really active on social media and mailing lists. And um, so that's another one to look out for. But I think what you say about that perception of people that are, famous or you know or signed to record labels because we see all that visual and all that you know glitz and glamour you think well oh, they must be absolutely raking it in but that's really interesting that you say that actually they're probably not getting what they should be getting from you know in terms of how hard they're working and what they're doing yes yeah, sometimes nothing sometimes the payment will be that video that everyone's watching being like they must be smashing it but yeah they're still living in ends they're still living where they live and it's it's tricky because it's like they're still living in the same place. What What do you think are, are the most? I mean, you talked a bit about like not being rude and stuff, but what do you think are the most important traits for people in the creative industries in general in the twenty first century? What would you say are the kind? You know, yeah. What are the best traits to have, or how should you be really? I think obviously hard work, um, having. Having a having a, a musical practice or performance practice, 
and being original. I think that now it's more easy than ever to spot all the carbon copies because we can just Google that before you could be in some weird country somewhere and be sound just like an act we have over here and, and ne never the two will match. But now because of the internet, it's very easy to see, oh, you're just another one of those. Uh, I think that if you want to, if you actually want to get, well, it's about being sincere. If you want to sound just like Post Malone, then that's what you want to do. But it's about finding what it is like that that's makes makes you music. Find out if you can be the as most you as you, then you probably you probably will get make great music. It will be authentic, and probably the money the money and other things will come or opportunities will come. But it's about being really honest with yourself and and doing that. Um, and it's difficult. I think it gets harder and harder because everything becomes about sounding like this person, sounding like that person. But if you let's just say you sounded just like Drake, you sounded just like him. Well, you're never going to get anywhere. This is a multi, multi. He's part of a billionaire the whole empire. You know, not like and not not because his sound is the best thing. He has the image and the label rare, rare. It, it serves no purpose. And your friends might be like, "Oh, you sound just like him." Is does he make the best music ever? No, but he's got a billion streams. All oh, that's part of the whole PR package. Like yeah. it, it, it ties into so much. It ties into so many other things. If you are just yourself, and everyone knows, oh, that's what so and so does. Oh, that's what his music is. You'll find yourself being part of having a gig as part of a, of a band, being asked to do work for a TV show, getting sets, making your own album. Someone wanting to fund your project because you you are a hundred percent you of you like you are doing your thing. I think that that's it's the. The authentic thing, and right now it's hard, is the most important thing. Um, because now there's so much tutorial. Yeah, Drake does everyone, it's true. There's so much tutorials online about, you know, how to hustle and how to be an artist. That everyone watches the same videos. So that everyone, everyone a, co a copy of a copy of a copy. It's about saying to yourself, leaning into the weird, leaning into what, what, what actually... The things that I'm not doing in this video, maybe they're right. Probably are right. Probably they're the things that I should be doing. Um, because you're just going to get caught up in it. You're just going to sound just like whatever artist you're trying to sound like, which is easier to do now than ever because, you know, the whole kind of digital template, you can just copy it. And and you're going to get nowhere because there's already that there's already that person. They already exist. So I think that that, that, that can't be overstated enough. Unfortunately, people still get falling into the trap of, oh, I need to sound a bit like it. And it's not just even your musical style. It's the mix. It's the sound of your music. It's everything. It's you'll, you'll play some music. You'll hear a young person play music to another young person, or you play the music and they'll say, well, these are the drums you should use. But why? They're not the drums I've used. This is the way you should mix that. But why? That's not the way this piece, this piece already exists. Yeah. Whereas there's become a wrong and right way to do it which is so redundant, doesn't make any sense. Go, I mean, you know, go to uh, listen to loads of records or from, from previous generations and they all sound very, very different. It's not about looking in the past and saying it's better then. What's, what it just means is that people aren't cutting through. There's much more competition. And the smart people, I think, do know, oh, I'm just going to do, I uh, do me, this is what I do. And and, 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 and they kind of get there. Some, some of them are wacky and some of them are strange and whatever, but... But they are them, at least at least they're original. Yeah, that's brilliant. And I think it the thing is about I mean, I know myself as a like sixteen to twenty one year old, the thought of actually being yourself and original is is hard, you know, it's a hard thing to do, isn't it? But I think it is such good advice that actually be authentic, stick to you, be weird, be different, you know, don't be scared to be you. That's you know, one of the most important things that you can be. And kind of have that confidence to know that because as well, if you're doing something you enjoy, then you're you're more likely to flourish and do better. Because you're already getting those reward those rewards, the rewards yeah. of I enjoy it. Like, I'm killing it right now. I'm killing it. So yeah. once someone else says to you, "Well done," it's like, oh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of like the cheering. The, but I'm already mad pleased. And then someone else says, "Fine," it's like, oh, all right, that's great. Whereas. Well, you see it, didn't you? You'll, you'll see some someone on TV, they're singing really, really bad. And then someone, some judge or someone will say, you sound amazing for a 12-year-old. And, you know, if you ask that person, but do they sound good? No, they sound awful. But for a 12-year-old, they sound good. And the person will be crying and crying, shocked. Or a 30-year-old, these people are shocked because they haven't actually worked on a craft. 
They haven't ever sat down and enjoyed what they were doing. They're like, they never expected this to happen. Whereas a lot of artists, it's kind of cool, but you don't necessarily have to have that validation. It's just part, you know, it's, it's, it's great. It's great for marketing, but you don't, you don't necessarily need it because it's like, I, I know, I know what I do is good. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Have you got any um, survival tips and tricks that you could share? So kind of like things that you wish you'd known then that you know now, you know, that kind of thing. Um, funding, apply for funding. I would have applied a lot younger because people had told me that before. Mm. Um, spend light, do you know what I mean? Because you want as much money to work on, to use, to work on your on your craft, to like... Um, I mean, to be honest, it's mainly, it's, ma it's mainly, mainly like the funding. Cause I, 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 I could, I possibly couldn't have rehearsed more. I couldn't have met up with more musicians more and done what I wanted to do. Cause I, cause that's what I've done with, for the last 20 years is like done all those things. Um, but I guess, you know, if, if anything, I could have done it more. I could, like, cause you know, now I'm working and stuff. I'm like, man, I wish I could just meet up somewhere and more jamming, more just m messing about, making stuff up. Like, yeah. and one thing I'll say actually is is enjoy those times now when you're when you're being creative, when you're coming up with new stuff, when you're experimenting. Because the second you start earning money or having a career or there's expectations on what you do, it's very difficult to go back and do something else. You never, you don't get those chances to ex explore anymore. And also you slowly get put in a box because, and, and you have to, because you now need to do those things. People want you to do those things that you've proven you do well to pay your bills. Uh, and it's very difficult uh, because you now can't, when do you have time to work on the, uh, something new? Whereas that palette you create early on, as young as you are, you know, I've got this bag, I've got this, uh, you know, I, I play the guitar like this, I know this is my vocal range, I've got these kind of beats, this is the kind of music I can do, blah, blah, blah. As soon as your career starts rolling, you we pretty much operate of all that rehearsal time, all those those skills. They start they they start your improvement slows down in very smaller increments. Like you start learning less licks, less 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 tricks with your voice, whatever it is you're doing, and you start playing on you start playing on that, and it kind of kind of comes like you know a fo fossilate. You're using those things now all the time. So be as experimental all, all, all the times. And, and improving, 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 because it gets harder because of time. Yeah, great advice, really good, thank you. Um, Mike's just said, put a comment in saying that the film looks amazing um, and has just asked, are these performers um, actors who train to make these sounds or are they singers, rappers who train to act? Because, you know, there might be people here that are thinking that they'd like to add that other dimension to their work. Um, so n none of them, um, they were all original, originally coming just to make make funny sounds so to, to beatbox and do other kind of sounds and then over over time we helped to improve their performance styles and now since since then or since we've done the show some of them one of them has gone to drama school and kind of like wanting wanting to learn more about acting and stuff but they're actually all vocal vocal eyes um main like mainly yeah, and these are young people that worked with you through BAC Beatbox Academy. They came through there, did they? Yeah, yeah. So like a, a couple of them I've known for twelve and thirteen years, but since they were like really, really young. Um, so yeah, it's funny because we go on tour and like there's all these people asking for autographs or whatever, whatever. And it's like, you know, we're the same. I still, you still feel like you're the same. You're the same people. Do you know what I mean? It's like this is funny, isn't it? Like. I remember your mum dropping you off after school. Like this is a bit, this is a bit mad. <laughs> How was the experience in Australia? Like that must have been because it was quite close to when COVID was starting. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, it was. It was right down to the wire, but it was alright because everyone had bought their tickets and wanted to do the festival. I mean, I'd heard that their numbers were down, but we we wouldn't know it because our, our our show had um, it sold out very early on, so it was great. And we, we, whilst we were there, we um, we were we had loads of TV spots and loads of after we do the gigs, we were off like, or our show the, the show, we were then offered loads of other evening gigs, so we'd just go off and do other gigs, and it was kind of, it was wild, and they treat us treat us really 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 good, it was great, yeah. I mean, how did that experience go? Because I know that you've got a 
great. Did you prepare any of them for these TV interviews or anything? You know, or did you just kind of go give them a bit of advice or were they like cool with that? You know, were they like, okay, this is this is my moment, you know, I'm going to just go with this? Good, good question, actually, because sometimes they haven't got... They haven't gone as well, actually, as we wanted. So possibly there could have been a bit more preparation into that. Because right. um, I would, I kind of like to just say it's, it's certain people do an interview. But then when it comes down to it, other ones, I want to do the interview. And it's like, oh, okay. And then it kind of it has spiraled into quite a strange, <laughs> strange place. And it's like, actually, oh yeah, I haven't really thought about why would you know how to give an interview? Why would you know how to, how to... Mm -hmm sell this in the way that we need it sold like which yeah. sounds quite cold but like that's why we're doing the interview basically is to get people interested in what we do yeah. and although we're sold out you want to sell the work because now we're going back to senior opera house we're going back to australia to do another tour so you want to yeah. but yeah you're, it's a good question I, uh basically it, it's very hard to, it, when things are happening so organically to kind of like prepare everyone for every scenario yeah. But it's interesting, isn't it? Because I think in the creative industries, there's so many different things that you need to learn or be, you know, from the kind of freelancing accounts to like interviews to selling yourself. It's it's a really multi-layered industry, I think. And, um, you know, it's like you said before, it's really important to just take opportunities when you can and listen to advice. And if someone says to you, oh, you know, I've got... Um, I'm great at Excel. Do you want to spend an hour, an hour with me? Do you know? Just take those opportunities because there are a lot of different layers that you need to know about. A lot of yeah. I mean, like like Excel and like doing yeah. your ta doing your taxes and taxes, all the yeah. other stuff. And like sometimes the people in the show, you know, will get angry, like it's something I'm putting on them. It's like no, the government's doing this. It has nothing to do with us. Like you're going to need to do this. Um, yeah. And that's kind of all, all that's part of just learning. I guess, I guess, like we all eventually come to that realization of, oh wow, there's all these different, all these different things that we're going to have to handle, and it gets, it gets harder. Yeah, brilliant, amazing. Thank you. We have got just ten minutes left, so I really want to give people an opportunity to ask any questions. Um, so if you've got any questions for Comrade, then please either raise your hand and feel free to come on and um, ask away or pop um, some questions in the chat um, or anything you, if you've had a little look at the Frankenstein link, anything you kind of want to say about that or ask um, would be great. I'll just give people a minute or so to see if they want to ask anything. Yeah, feel free to ask anything, like, I don't really mind. Yeah. <laughs> This is the thing, we've got, you know, we've got Conrad here who's got many, many years of experience behind him and up for asking, well, up for answering anything you want to know. So, um, if not Conrad, we might have to have a little beatboxing session. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know you've got some skills, Charlotte, so do you know what I mean? We can no, have, I haven't. We can well, have... you know, I did, yeah. I've, I've been lucky enough to do a bit of beatboxing with Conrad and uh, he's a very good teacher. <laughs> Mike, Mike wants to know more about beatboxing, so um, <laughs> battle. I'd like to know more about beatboxing, battle. Um, yeah, so tell us a bit more about your beatboxing, Conrad, and how that all came about. Yeah, there's actually another question here about have you have you ever had to stop working with someone because of their oh, attitude? Yeah. Yes, good question, then. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, we, so we, tr we, we, try and, we try and give a lot of second chances. Um but the, the the I guess the answer to that question is yeah we have we have, um, because of being rude, um, being violent as well, being violent. Right. Um, so in Frankenstein we've had like three or four people play the same part, um, and I think the the reason why is those are people who got reasons why, but I know why it's because that role is specifically everyone in the show has to be a beatbox has to kind of be able to harm and stuff, but everyone has the main main strengths. Um, and that role, the person has to rap. So we've always, we've picked people that, that, that rap, they're gonna to need to be able to rap first. But the, tr but the trouble is not everyone who's just a rapper is gonna be ready for the sort of pressure that it is when you're having to rehearse a show like this yeah. and deal with like, you know, rehearsal times, show times, and all those other things and it can and it can make 
it's made a few of them kind of go off the edge because it's okay to like write bars and speak them to your mates and blah, blah, blah. But having to rehearse them over and over again with other people who maybe, maybe they make a mistake. Maybe it might have got out of time when we've got to start again. Um, they get very, very frustrated. So we try and give, we try and give like second chance. It depends, isn't it? Some people shouldn't, you know that they should know better. I know that sounds bad, but you're like, um, like I don't expect you to act like this. Some people, you know, you, you learn about people over the years and you understand, you know, someone's like recently been made homeless or something and they come into a rehearsal, maybe they're going to be a bit pissed off and you maybe give them a second chance. But um, it, it depends on it. Like viol certain types of violence and other things you, you have to, unfortunately, you have to say, uh, well, not unfortunately, you just have to say no to for the rest of the cast uh, and everyone else. So, um, it's quite a rare thing, but with that show, and I think because of the pressure of it, we had to. Yeah. Which must be hard, because those people will have seen the show go on and be very successful. Yeah, but hopefully, you know, again, they would have learned something from that experience, definitely. And, you know, the next thing they would have gone to, they'll take that with them. Oh, yeah, 100%, 100%, percent. I hope so. I really hope so. Because yeah. I liked all of them. That's why they were in the show. But it was just, yeah, yeah, too much. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about your, um, about beatboxing? Did you just discover that you could beatbox or did you? You know, like beatboxing is part of kind of the main um, tenets and elements of hip hop. So like my first, my first um, entry into hip hop was actually through dance, hip hop dance. I watched a film called Breakdance, but in that film, people are freestyling on the mic, people are dancing, there's graffiti on the wall, I'm thinking this is, you know, now it all sounds, we're used to that world, but as a kid, that was very new. It was like, this is insane. This is like, this is the way the music sounded, the whole vibe. Um, and then you start learning about all the other things, so like knowledge, like it's the way that like, it's people that maybe may not be book smart, but like, you know, you're supposed to be passing on as much, even if you've read a book, you're passing that knowledge to other people, you share knowledge, you share experiences, uh, and the thing about beatboxing was, is that in the eighties, um, you used to put have to put batteries into the stereos, so people would be singing and dancing with the batteries. But the batteries are the most expensive form of power. They still are. They'd run out, and then no more partying, no more dancing, no more rapping. But apparently, there was this character in the corner, hidden away, that was all of a sudden like, <laughs> all of a sudden, I started dropping beats. Um, and then the, the, everything started carrying on partying and dancing. So to me, it was kind of part of the whole kind of hip hop, uh, the whole the whole culture, hip hop culture, and part of, part of one of the elements. And um, so, because like rapping was also really important to me, um, and I realised that it'd be great to fuse beatboxing and rapping and the elements of hip hop with theatre to kind of create like a much more of a performance as opposed to like an isolated element because people would isolate the different things of hip-hop whereas all of it is supposed to really come together uh, and, and use it in combination and i do like solo beatboxers i think they're sick but if you're working in a group it's great to kind of combine the different sounds together because just yeah. you know how are you gonna have a show of one person just beat they people do do this they have a show of one person just beatboxing the whole time but to me, that's kind of redundant because hip hop is about people working together and about collaboration. And um, regardless of everyone's different skills, we try and we, we you try and make it work the best way you can. So um, that was kind of like why why I was attracted to beatboxing, and also anyone can do it um, because even if it's just the hi hats you're doing, you know, your your beatbox to making a sound. Someone else can sing over that. Someone else can be doing other stuff. Um, you you can still be part of the crew. Amazing. And I guess, and like you say, you know, bringing that into theatre, you're also opening up to a whole new audience as well. And you're, you know, you're inviting people in that wouldn't necessarily go to theatre who are going to come and, you know, enjoy something that they like and that they want, that they feel part of and connected with as well. So I guess you, yeah, you, I bet you've seen a lot of that of new audiences coming into venues as well that you've been part oh, of. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people, oh, what's funny is, we and we still hear it now. Like, I remember hearing it, like, you know, 15, 16 years ago. But still now, you hear people be like, oh, I, I thought I hated all that rap stuff. And you're like, oh, okay. But I really like that. And, like, you kind of, 
you kind of want to ask them, had you ever actually heard it live before? Like, had you ever actually been to a live event? Because the radio or TV is only a small element of everything. Like, it's a very, it's the lowest common denominator bits of all art forms. But yeah, it's, it's when you really go out and see it in the flesh, you realise, oh, actually, this is all right. But yeah, we've seen, we've seen lots of crossover. Um, but yeah, a lot of people say, um, I thought I hated this. And also, again, it's about bringing young people and you know, and adults as well, you know, to, to the theatre who wouldn't necessarily go. Because um, I would try and say to people, you know, this is this is a public building, it's your place as well, we're all welcome. And people are d d dist distrusting of, like, establishment, public buildings, wherever they don't want to go there, like they have no relationship or reason to go there. And it's a great way to bring these different things together. To me, it's not like, um, we don't want to silo it off to be like, this is the thing that the ethnic minorities in <laughs> in Battersea Arts Centre do. It's for everyone. That That's yeah. what it's supposed to be. Um, and a lot of theatres, unfortunately, uh, a lot of the stuff they do is very much siloed into different demographics, whereas I don't, and there's nothing about hip hop that's supposed to be actually be there. Amazing, brilliant. Thank you, comrades. Right. So there's no more. Um, there's no more questions coming in. So unless anyone has a burning question, I think we're going to have to stop them because we've got one minute left. Um, and I know that Donna um, from GB Met just needs to tell you a little bit about um, the evaluation. But I just want to say a massive thank you to Comrade. That was really brilliant and um, yeah, open and you gave some great advice and yeah, really interesting to hear about what you do. So thank you very much. No, thank yeah. you. Thanks for listening, guys. Hopefully that was helpful and informative. Yeah, cheers, really cheers, Mike. Okay. And um, I'll pass you over to Donna. Thanks, Donna. Um, I just want to say thank you to Comrade as well, um, and for you all for coming along. Um, I think most of you have been to the previous weeks as well, so I'll be sending you through the evaluation. Um, uh, and if you join us next week, we have got um, some, a, a BBC Radio um, producer will be joining us, so you can find out from him. So I'll send that through by email tonight. Great, thank you everyone. And um, it will be my colleague Louise next week, so I won't see you next week if you're here, but um, thanks everyone for joining. Good to see you and thanks for the questions as well. And we'll see you again soon.